That's the grand final edition of Fireball Friday, our last one for the year. Our Twitter poll is up. You can vote on that. And we're going to have a deep dive into the AFL grand final shortly, how the game is going to be won or lost. Still to come, Peter Moore, the Collingwood legend, the dual Norm Smith medalist is Gary Ayres. He's going to join us. Craig Stasevich, but an unsolicited star <laughs> just joining us this yeah. morning. And when you think grand finals... <laughs> what do we think? Well, I think Gary Ayres, Peter Moore, Scott Cummings. That's what you think. Hello, mate. Hello, uh, boys. How are you? I just popped in to say hello. Yeah, yeah. good on you. The star uh, of SEN uh, WA, Breakfast with Tim Goss. How is Goss? He's, yeah. on, he's on a Twitter band. <laughs> no, no, no. What's no, no. happened? I'm worried, I'm worried about <laughs> You've him. You've broken him. You've no, broken... I haven't broken yes, him. You have. it's, it's like a sport for me just to sit back and watch Goss jump on Twitter. He baits a hook, he throws it out. And my word, is it a frenzy? And they come for him. Not real nice stuff. Um, not a lot. He's of... off. No, nah, no, nah, he'll, he'll be he'll be back. He's, How long? He's too good. Oh, I'll give it. A, I'll give it till tonight. Tonight. He, he said on Twitter, "This is my last post." <laughs> he did, no, he? no, no, no. He's just. <laughs> he thinks it's an Anzac Day or something. What's wrong with what? him? No, no, he'll, he'll be back on. He's he's good. It just okay. it, it just the people need to just sort of. Just calm the farm a little bit on, we, on Twitter. You. We've missed you over here. Yeah, I've missed the place. I've just yeah. been back for the last three days and just gone, oh, oh this is good. This yeah. is a good place. But it's grand final week. It's one of the most exciting weeks of the year, and uh, it's good to have one of my teams in it. Mm, is hell freezing over in the West or what? No, 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 no. There's, um, it seems to be a decided lack of interest in it, to be perfectly <laughs> honest. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> they're following the, yeah. the, the NBL at the moment. Well, it hasn't been. Yeah, yeah, well, with the Wildcats start tonight. Uh, our team, our team, the Wildcats start they tonight. They should schedule a game for three fifteen tomorrow. Though. <laughs> <laughs> there's lots of barbecues. Lots of people appearing. I'm not sure whether they're trying to uh, get up me on our show, but uh, they're all going for Brisbane. Uh, what yeah. happened? Like last year, Collingwood somehow became everyone's. Second favourite team, the no, way they were playing, no, it was no, it, it was happen. exciting. No, 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 it was awesome. And then they got good. Yeah, then they and got, got sustainably yeah. good. Yeah. And it's like, no, we don't, we can't have that. But uh, <laughs> we're all moving to Perth if they win the thing. I'm telling you, oh, come on over. It's beautiful. It's a lovely lifestyle. We're, we're, we're very lucky in the end because it could have been Carlton Collingwood. We can, then you can't win. Oh, yeah. Well, no, I was I was fearful of that, and, and I'm you know I'm a Collingwood supporter. There's no, and, and a lot of people wonder why. And the simple answer is that they're the only ones that, that didn't sack me. They let me retire, and that's because I spoke first in the meeting with Mick in the exit interview. <laughs> to, uh, pulled a face at me. I said, I retire. <laughs> Do I? Do I retire? Goes, I think you retire. I said, yes, I retire. But they, well, they looked after me so well for the last 20 years uh, being here in Melbourne, and then they show me incredible loyalty, and for that they'll always have mine. So I'm, I'm all over the... How many, uh, how many of your teams made the finals this year? Uh, two. two. Just the two? Two, yeah. Okay. Port Adelaide and Port Adelaide, and uh, they continually let me down in September. I don't want to. I'm not sure we start that here. No, 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 no. I'm not sure. This oh. is the forum. Let's yeah. not go there. <laughs> but no, no. Um, Eston and West Coast just missed out. So what is, what's your function here this week? Mm. Mm. I'm just do, what. What are you doing? <laughs> just, what, what are you doing specifically? Well, we, I'm taking my boy to the game. Are you in our list? <laughs> A little no, a- ATO no, 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 alert mine's, list? No, no, I'm just doing a, a free gig for the club tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> Scott, <laughs> breakfast tomorrow for free. the grand final <laughs> breakfast tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be great to be back at the glass house oh. and, um, job. and hosting the people. The what? What's that word? <laughs> no, 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 I'm just a free gig just because I feel like I owe the Give club. Back. There. <laughs> Who wins? <laughs> I couldn't even speak Who the wins words and yet. why, Scotty? Uh, look, it's, it's all shaping up. For Brisbane at the moment, it's all just sort of lining up for them. Hasn't been 28 degrees here since, what, February? Mm. Uh, mm. That, that's not going to help. Uh, I think McStay, even though he doesn't get huge numbers, I think he's a massive out uh, as far as structure goes and just that extra big body that keeps Harris Andrews busy. Yeah. Uh, not playing Jackson Payne's a handy thing, I think, because um, he allows Harris Andrews to do what he wants to do. I, I'm going to stick with the pies. You know what? Because they just – your footy head says – Brisbane, mm. and you look at it all, everything, and I'm surprised you, David. I'm not a massive numbers man. Oh, hello. I'm just to go and get the agony. Hello. Man. <laughs> hello. You and all your numbers, just fair dinkum. <laughs> Give me a headache. Um, but if, if, if your footy brain says Brisbane, <laughs> yeah, but no, nah, listen. But, but Collingwood find a way. It's not your footy brain. <laughs> no, I don't. Where, have where's your notes. function tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, Collingwood. Where's your function? It's my wallet brain. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. It's, it's my heart says Collingwood. They find a way, and they always find a way, uh, and. 
This is we're just going to paint Brisbane as the complete favourite. Collingwood's mm. going to be the underdogs. It's going to be one of the great wins of the history of football. Everything stacked against them, and they win. <laughs> have I worked that all right? Yeah, not bad. Not well, I think the pies. What have you, what have you guys? Yeah, no, said? I'm a little bit similar take as you. But I think Brisbane are better. Brisbane yeah. have a better side. MCG has to, and they but keep saying it doesn't bother them. The MCG, but it clearly it does. Yeah, clearly it does. Clearly it does. They played all right the MCG this year. Yeah, they right. should have beaten Melbourne, I mean, but they didn't. Oh, they were Melbourne five should have been Collingwood, but they didn't. They GWS five. should have been Collingwood, but they didn't. Yeah, but it doesn't mean you played poor football. Yeah, it means you can't win there. Okay, mm. all right. Just give me something to hang on to. All right, all right. You disagree. You're going you for go Brisbane. Go with that at your cashy tomorrow and see. You go, it's not a cashy, mate. Scotty, we'll let you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go to work. Uh, yeah. Say hi to What's God for us. I'm just keeping a list. What's your business name? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's his glass half yeah. empty incorporated. What are yeah. you, what, what are you mine's, a, mine's, I was never here. <laughs> <laughs> see you, boys. A go man talk to you. who <laughs> kicked 95 goals what? in 1999. Scotty, 95 goals, 42. Oh, Very accurate on. set shot as well. I mean, Joe the Goose is very accurate. Oh, a right, oh, Sheeds. <laughs> <laughs> Play for Essendon, Port Adelaide, West Coast, and Collingwood, and the face of SEN at WA I love departing the studio. Um, a ripper. All right, let's get into the footy for my cruisers. Friday FOMO. That offer is going to be announced very shortly. Stick around to hear that in a few moments' time. It's our grand final preview. We would love for you to get involved. One three hundred seven three six seven three six. Let's start with the Red Hot Pies, who have been the best side all year. They finished on top of the ladder. They got through against GWS in the prelim final by a point. Kingy, what is Collingwood's biggest weapon tomorrow? I think speed. If there's one flaw with the Lions, I think they lack a little bit of leg speed through the middle of the ground and and in their back half. I think if you can carry the ball at them and charge at them, which the Pies can do, if they can explode from clearances, which they haven't really done, the last couple of weeks. It happened in about the first five minutes of the game in the prelim, and we didn't see it again mm. really from Collingwood. So they, those midfield clearances we talk a lot about, they're the ones where they generally are run and gun and explode to go at pace, Pendlebury handballing, creating, Dacos gone mm-hmm. uh, and taking off. I think if they can put speed on the game, everything changes. Pies fans, one three hundred seven three six seven three six. 736 What is your biggest weapon tomorrow? For, for me, it's the... The ferocity of which they get after the opposition. When they play with that pressure, I wonder how Brisbane will cope with that. And the sign of that will be, where are Brisbane launching inside 50 from? Is it deep or is it shallow? Um, Yeah, and are they getting those deep or shallow entries is what I'm trying to say. If it is shallow and the ball is landing at the top of the 50 or 45 metres out and we're seeing more and Cameron back in, Really good intercepting form. We know Quain is a great intercept mark. We know Maynard is that. And then they get their game going from there and they slingshot. That's their biggest weapon for me. So the pressure that they provide on the ball gives you a high ball, gives you the intercept, that gives you the help in the air across halfback. They win the ground ball across halfback or in the air, then they go. That for me is is their biggest weapon. What's their biggest worry? The biggest worry for me with McStay now out is Frampton comes in and Frampton's been solid for them yeah, in not different a natural roles. Forward though, is he? But he's he's a guy that can have minimal impact on a game. Mason Cox can have those days where he can have minimal impact on a game. And and let's be frank, he's not he hasn't been a goal scorer no. really. He's kicked two goals in six weeks. Mm. He's been really good in the ruck. But does does the fact that McStay's not in the forward line mean that he has to spend more time for it? And Darcy Cameron, I don't think's in super form. Mm. So for me, you got those three tools that you may not get a lot out of. That's my worry. If they have minimal impact, minimal clearance uh, dominance, minimal scoreboard impact, half a dozen disposals each, you're in real trouble. You are. And then how early do you go with the sub? Because it's a hot day. So if if they are having minimal impact, and if it's Frampton minimal or one of those two big fellas, you, you ideally sub them off and get Lipinski on. But then you're going... Oh, it's early in the third quarter. What if we get an injury? Well, then we're down on rotation. It's a hot day. So you really don't want to pull the, the trigger on that sub too early. What so, worries you? Yeah, well, that, that definitely the forward line. I don't think they've got a commanding forward who can really grab the game and take it away from Brisbane, where Brisbane have probably got five of them. Yeah. That if they have a big day, one of those five Brisbane forwards, it is all over. I'm not sure Colin would have that. So they're, they're relying on, on the midfield dominance and, you know, a Degoe or a Dacos getting a hold of you. But is Elliot 
not in great form. Is he going to get you? Is Majacek going to get you? Probably not. Is Ginevan going to get you? Probably, prob- may he may kick three, but probably not. So just the, the lack of firepower. But also I think the ruck is, is interesting as well. I think Oscar McInerney is in really good form mm. and he is able to get the ball into space just with almost like the old school Brisbane Ruckman during the early 2000s where he can clear the area and you get him a cluggage or a Neil or a Rayner running onto that with momentum and you get it out of the phone box where Pendlebury and Mitchell and Dugowie do so much good work. So I think the ruck is an issue for them he as well. He struggled, Big O, against Cameron and Cox at the, uh, yep. the, the game at Yeah, Cox came on as, as the sub. He did. And was angry and aggressive. And fresh yep. and just jumped it all over him. And, and even Cameron struggled. Cameron's a big body, I understand that. Oscar, to me, looks like the more aggressive of the two. But he... He, for some reason, didn't have a great game last time. So I'm with you. I think if Oscar can take control, then start grabbing it out of the ruck. Yep. Pop handballs, not the, th- the surge handballs. Mm, mm. But the spikes become a bit of a weapon. So let's, let's wait and see. Let's wait and see on that. He, he obviously kicked two goals in the prelim as well. I mean, if he adds that to it, he's only had seven goals leading into that game. He's got nine for the year, so unlikely. But that could test them as well the other way. If this happens, they will win. Finish that sentence for Collingwood. If Nick Dacos has 35, right. they win. Right. I'll just he, I'll get back to that speed discussion. You know, he's the one that creates the overlap. He's the one that creates that line-out wave run that they get going. It's Dugowie and Pendlebury and Sidebottom and then the halfbacks at speed joining in. So I, I think I think if Nick – I don't think they'll tag Nick. I think you'll get a free run at it because mm. you really can't tag him. No. Uh, and not many have true tags anymore. And you can't do two. Anyway. Like, if they're going to do one, it's going to be Dunkley on to go. You know, At stoppage only. Yeah, though. it won't be a full-on tag. No. Dunkley will try and win his own ball, but you're not going to have two. No, it'll just be at stoppage with Dunkley. Yeah. But So I, I think a lot rests on, on Nick's shoulders, and he's been so good in his first couple of – I mean, I, I can't remember us talking about a second-year player no, like this since Chris Judd. Mm. But uh, – no, I, I think if he has a 35-plus, she's, she's all over. For me, it's if they win the ground ball. So they haven't won the ground ball in either of their two finals. And, in fact, they were smashed by the Giants at ground ball um, by 15. If Collingwood can reverse that, and I think they would have done a lot of work on that in the last couple of weeks, they're also beaten by Melbourne. You go, well, they still won those games. But just, really. And, and you could make a case that... They probably shouldn't have won both those games. If they win ground ball, if they are hunting, if you're watching at home on TV and you pause the vision and there's more Collingwood players than uh, Brisbane players in the frame, that's when I think Collingwood play their best. The the high ball goes inside their defensive 50 and they swarm at ground level. So I'll keep an eye on the ground ball numbers. Some good text. Man with a foot in both camps. Well, as a player, of course, Justin Lepich, three-time star, and now pulling a lot of the tactical strings upstairs behind the glass for Collingwood, giving us his thoughts. Kingy says if Nick Dacos has 35-plus, they win. I'm saying if Collingwood win the ground ball, they win. Tom is in Seaford. What do the Pies need to do tomorrow? Tom, welcome to the show. Oh, good day, fellas. Fantastic show. Look, I think a couple of things I jotted down here from an armchair point of view. It, look, they've got to try to negate the influence of Harris Andrews. They've got to try to keep the ball away from him because he's so good and he sets up so much play and he's so reliable down there. The other thing is that, that Brisbane's got the edge in the forward line, no doubt, but the delivery into the Collingwood forward line's, forward line's got to be spot on because they've got to clear. They've got to use their speed and they've got to use their agility at ground level to bring that ball in and keep it away from their talls. But that, and, of, of course, centre clearances. Uh, and, it's, and it's going to be relentless. Otherwise, I think uh, Brisbane is probably strong, stronger in personnel, but Collingwood's got... It seems to be speed versus height is going to be a big issue. Good call. Cool. What do you think? Good on you, Tommy. Yeah, good call. Let's whip through a few of these. Jamie's on the line. What do Brisbane need to do, Jamie? Hey, yeah, good morning, fellas. Uh, super excited, Brisbane Lions fans. So we're back here again 20 years later. Can't wait. <laughs> hey, um, it's all about Nick Dacos. Um, you know, if he has, you know, 15, 16, 17 touches, we win. Um, and I just wondered, can you, like, do the Lions tag him or do they have anyone they can really send to him or is it kind of just more a, a system thing? System thing, unfortunately, we we hate talking about the system thing, don't we? But mm. uh, when you when you look at his year this year, I think he's had thirty five plus. I think it's eight times, and the only time they've lost was actually to Brisbane when he had thirty five, but he kicked two. And he remember, remember they was that had, in Brisbane. It was in Brisbane. Yeah. They had that surge where they come yeah. with a rush back into the game. He was the reason. 
Didn't get any brown low votes that night, by the way. But that's a whole other story, Cornsy. <laughs> so if he has 30-plus, which he's done, I think, a dozen times this year, and that's the only game they've lost. So he's he's the one that in, injects speed. So that's a good call. Good luck to your team. Uh, Jamie, thanks for your thoughts this morning. Ben's in Roeville. What's Collingwood's biggest worry, Benny? Hey, boys. How are you? Good. Hey, quick one. Watching the prelim, as well as we defended, I thought at times our defence got a little bit loose, where GWS end up getting the two, one to two players loose behind play. And they both resulted in goals. And then sort of going on that first call, same thing. Um, I thought our entries into our forward line, like when you're kicking a high ball to Jamie Allett, it's too easy to defend. He needs to be on ground. Um, so I think our delivery into the forward line needs to be a bit lower and sharper. Um, you going the game, Benny? I am. I'm hopefully picking up a ticket today, a thousand bucks. Oh. I'm hopefully, I've hopefully got one lined up. I can't. I'm, I'm pumped. I lost oh. my voice last Friday, so yeah, good, I can't wait. Good luck to you, mate. Just watching yeah, well. Tony Jones outside of the MCG as those waiting to get the best seat in the house how are long, camped. How long have they been there? We should try and get TJ on, actually. I might send him a message in a moment and he'll join us. Uh, I don't know. We'll find out because I can't hear what he's saying at the moment. We'll try and get TJ. <laughs> I thought you might have heard. On the, I wasn't <laughs> We'll get TJ, to to TJ on the program. <laughs> he lost a bit of weight, TJ. Has he, he's yeah. look, he's looks looking good. good, TJ. He's looking really good. Ron's in Brisbane. We've been picking on him for 12 months. What's your thoughts, Ronnie? How are we going? Great. Good. Uh, Kingy, I just want to know, you say Nick Dacos, if he gets 35 plus, they win. How many of those possessions does he get from the kickouts at full back? Oh no! I think that criticism's uh, that criticism's gone. It would be three, two to three, I reckon, per game. It's not enough to worry about. If you, if you think he's an uncontested possession player, you're wrong. He's had he's had ten or more in what six of his last nine games. Um, so I, I I don't think that's valid that criticism. I, I, he's been an enormous clearance uh, contributor since about round fifteen. Uh, he's, I can give you his numbers. He's had. He's at 11, 7, 9, 6, 6. Mm, Look, mm. They're big numbers for clearances. So I, I, I don't think that his numbers are fattened in any way by kickouts. It is our grand final preview on Fireball Friday. Stack of texts coming through as well. Morning, Kane and Kingy. Do you think if Cam Rayner is on and firing, he is just as impactful and dangerous as Dugowie? He's my first pick on the field, says Steele from Brisbane. He's not as prolific as Dugowie. He's not a high possession player. He's a 16 to 17 is a good result and then scoreboard impact. But how many big, big games has he had? Yeah, not not many yet, but no. he's building. I'm not sure how many Dugowie had had in his first sort of five or six years in the league either. Yeah, no, I'm not I'm yeah. not being too hard on him, but if I, we talk a lot about Cam Rayner. Mm. We'll get to Brisbane in a moment, but he, it would have been one of the goals of the year last week if he was able to finish the deal against Carlton, mm. where he flew for the mark, landed like a cat, bounced off a few bodies, and then ended up snapping a point. But uh, Had a big game against Port Adelaide in that first final. Had a big yeah, one. Yep. He got them going. Um, this text, Kane and Kingy, is it possible the Magpies could stretch the lines on the big MCG? It is a big ground, and the Pies play it on it every week. Uh, that is a well. That I mean, that's a huge advantage. You get the grand final on your home deck, where you've hardly left this year. That's got to be factored in as well. G'day, boys. It's who handles the occasion better. It's not a normal game. Stats don't mean as much tomorrow. An injury to a key player on any side turns the game, as we know. Bobby Hill can light it up. Go pies, says Jeff in Noosa. Half your luck, Jeff. We had Dennis on last week, you and I. Yes. And I thought he's he's he was great. His his phrasing was fantastic. He can be the best team all year. It doesn't matter. You got to be the best on that given day. Yep. And we're all guessing. We're talking about form coming in. Once they bounce that ball tomorrow, it doesn't really matter what happened in round sixteen or eighteen or twenty. It's about performing it up our three. Yeah, tomorrow. and uh, the the function I did with Joel yesterday, he said that in two thousand nine, he reckons they the Saints were probably better, but on the day yep. they were they were absolutely better, and, and and that's all that has to happen. That's why the cutthroat nature of a one grand final, and it all leads to this, is so fascinating. Tezza, stick around. We're going to do the Brisbane side of things on the other side of this. It is our grand final preview for Loop Logics, the future of construction management. For a free demo, visit looplogics.com. It's time for a uh, lot of texts coming through. Uh, Kane, if Brisbane get the Collie Wobbles, then Collingwood will win. Hipwood and Danaher cannot miss their first few shots at goal, says Martin in Carlton. I think that's that's a good thing to watch out for as well. Um, Fallen foul, that one. Yep. 
a couple of times. And well, when you just kicking through the big thing. <laughs> Six what fifteen was... at half time we oh, were. Oh no, it's a bad day, isn't it? That's a bad day. Yeah, that's a bad. That's blocking a lot, it out. It's only been thirty years. Go. Um, all right, let's uh, go to the phones. Tezza has been waiting patiently. Uh, you sound a bit pessimistic about the pies, Tezza. What's your thoughts? Um, morning, boys. Uh, now, I'm a massive, massive Lions fan. I just, I'll give you two points where I think we can win it and, and how we can lose it. I think Charlie Cameron's the, the key. Uh, I've watched them both times we've played them this year. Quainer, he's t- absolutely tore him apart. He's too good. If he gets off the leash, Charlie, he, he's the man. And, and the thing that worries me about the pies, if they send a goey deep in a one-on-one I think he's too good for any of our defenders one-on-one. And if they sneak Jeremy Howe down there as well, another guy I don't think, if them two are both in the forward line at the same time, I don't think... I, I think Starcevic is our lockdown man. I don't think we have someone else that can lock down with them. So good that's how on. I think we'll win it, and that's how I think we'll lose it. I, I like the... How did go to Harris Andrews for parts of that round 22, was it? 22 or 3? Yep. Uh, that, that like game late in the season anyway... That that's a move that I'd look at, because you, you've got to give him something mm, to worry mm, about, Harris. Mm. And I don't think he's going to overly invest in Billy. Not going to be too worried about Billy. Uh, I wouldn't have thought. Thanks for your thoughts, Tezza. Let's go to Brisbane and speak to Mark. You got a prediction for us, Mark? Yeah, just a bit of a uh, feeling I have. I don't know where it's come from, but I just had some sort of premonition of um, Siren going ball in Hipwood's hands, tucked up hard against the boundary, exact same boundary as the. Um, um, uh, kick and I don't know he threads it through the eye of the needle after the siren goal umpire looks at the Brisbane players gives a little smile and signals a goal and they lose by a point to pies and heartbreak all over again been a, been Permission. A, been a big week Mark <laughs> oh yeah yeah massive lines man in Brisbane I had almost everything planned to come down but I was there in 03 and I uh, didn't get to see a thing because I was Hard underneath the new stand being built and it's better being at home watching the big screen and celebrating with fellow Brisbane people. Mm. Good on, Mark. Thanks for your thoughts. Fire up, mate. You're in a grand final. Come on, Get Mark. excited. Pump He's yourself up. He's seen the finish up. anyway. He doesn't need to yeah. go. Tony's in Mill Park. You want to speak about a couple of guns, small forwards, Tone? Yeah, how are you, boys? Tone. Hey, um, I'll just I'll tell you, a Carlton supporter I am, but to uh, to see Bobby Hill being chased by Charlie Cameron down that Shane Warne side of the, the ground or... The opposite way, you know, Charlie being chased by Bobby Hill would be just something special. Similar to... Um, Jetta and Rioli. And, um, yeah, how good would that be? Yeah, in the but on, the, on the game itself, on the game itself, you know, these Brisbane forwards have got smalls that play tall and talls that play small, and um, they've they've got something special in that forward line. Having said that, geez, Collingwood's got that intangible asset of um, belief, you know, and they can mm. just do anything. And it, I hate saying it, but... Um, no, really, it really could be a ripper game. Yeah, there, there's a few texts Same. coming through as well about that uh, Collingwood spirit. This, this seems they seem to be destined in a way with the way that they've played, the way that they're able to uh, stay involved in games and come back from anywhere. G'day, gents. Not sure if it's been discussed, but how important could the sub be given yes. the conditions? Fatigue will be at an all-time high, and if the game is in the balance, it could be uh, critical. So it'll be Lions, and we know it's going to be Lipinski. Um, I think I love the Jack Ginnivan as sub. You like him as sub? Well, when he stands, takes the mm. shirt off the crowd, the crowd have an association with him, a reference with him, don't they? Yep. They, they seem to lift, oh, Jack's coming on, Jack, Jack's coming on, you know, and, and they, it, you can feel a little starts murmur. starts warming up. I don't think you're going to get the same thing with I Lipinski. don't reckon he'll go with the long sleeve tomorrow. Why well, wouldn't he? Well, it's going to be 29. <laughs> Yeah, well, Michael Tuck used to go with it. Will he used to go with it all the time. Will Ginevan, my man, go with the long sleeve? I think he tomorrow. will. You think he will? Well. He couldn't. It would be uh, ridiculous if he did. We'll find out later on. If he does, it'll last about half a quarter and he'll rip that He'll rip that off. Uh, all right, let's uh, focus on the Lions. For them, what is their biggest weapon, Kingy? I think they've got two. The, the two weapons that they've got, it creates scores for them. I think the way McCluggage plays, it's always one step goal side, if you like, as a midfielder. He's looking to get forward. He's looking to hit the scoreboard. He can have a 20 disposal, two goal game, or a 25 disposal, three goal game quite easily, mm. the way he plays. Yeah. He's very aggressive. I think that Pendlebury put some time into him last time, and I think they'll probably look at that again. 
you just got to have a great handle on where he is at all times. And Kadee and Common, I, I don't think uh, we've seen the best of this guy yet, and we're just scratching the surface. At halfback last week, he was the one that said, hey, let's change the angles. Yeah. Let's play a little no bit smarter. Fear. Let's play a little bit different. If he can get that going at the MCG with the space available, then I also think Colin would like to roll up that half forward flanker. They may make it Nick mm. Dacos. They mm. may they may say, Dacos, you go to half forward and you roll up, yep. you'll be free, and we'll give them Coleman behind the ball. Who wins that matchup? Does Dacos around the footy get that that many disposal, that much ball that you have to panic? Or do you have Coleman holding behind the footy, carving you up with his ball use? He looked like Andrew McLeod last yeah, week. he did. Really did. So they're the two for me. All right. Have you say what's Brisbane's biggest weapon? I, I just think it's the, the aerial but also ground ball threats of their forwards. Um, they're, they're all excellent at ground level. We know how much damage they can do from forward stoppage. You've highlighted that during the year. But aerially, Link McCarthy... Cam Rayner, they're all exceptional there. And then when the ball hits the deck, you've got Cameron, you've got Zorko, if he's there, you've got Bailey. Um, oh, they're just everywhere. So uh, f for Brisbane, their focus has to be to bring the ball to ground in their forward line, get a ground ball game inside forward 50, and the, dam and the damage could be could be maximum. Um, it's an unreal forward line. The, oh, it's just unbelievable. Brisbane coach Chris Fagan speaking about the seven-year journey to get them to this point. They won five games in his first two years in 17 and 18. They jumped to 16 wins the following year. Five years in a row they've played finals and now they are through to a grand final. Since we've become the AFL, the 18 premiership coaches, 15 have won it in their first five years. Mm. 15 of the 18 first five years. Choco Williams, year six. Bomber Thompson, and Damien Harwick year eight. So Fags is in year seven, so yep. he would be just outside that little window we talk about, and obviously Craig's only in year two. So this is this, you got to win them. When you've when you, when you got something different about the way you're playing, so we'll get to the coaches' discussion later on, but they're, they're bloody hard to win, they're aren't they? They're so hard to win. Hey? They've done a great job to get there, and now you're there. Gee whiz, what a difference it would make to the CVs of these two coaches. No doubt. You've got to make the most of that. All right, it's the grand final edition of this. <laughs> I had some great success within the gun last right. week. I had Jordan Ngoi in the gun off the back of the 12 touches in the 2022 prelim final. And I said that he owed the football club a big performance. And didn't he deliver? Oh, bang. He probably his career best. It was his toughest game for a while. He'd yeah. been an uncontested possession player for about six weeks. 13 of those clearances, and it happened right from the start. No one could tackle him. He broke about eight tackles. I'm putting him in the gun again. You're not. I am. Well, how can I you? I am putting Double barrel. Jordan Degoe in the gun again. What are you going to say about him he's, this time? Well, well tomorrow he's not going to get as much freedom as what he got. I, I don't know. <laughs> They should, Adam Kingsley should have sleepless nights about allowing Jordan to go to stand all on his own at a stoppage. Mm. Just standing all alone, bursting away from, now that is not going to happen tomorrow. So this will be a different type of test. He's not going to get 34 touches. He's not? But no, nah, he's not getting 34, but he may be, he may get 22 and he may be really important, but it's not going to be a best on ground performance. I don't think he'll be allowed to do that. So how can he impact the game? How can he insert his physicality on the game? He's spoken this week about the heartbreak of 2018 and he you know, played really well that day and he's a good finals performer. But I want to see him back it up in a different way when you've got someone in your back pocket at stoppage tomorrow. So Jordan Ngoi, you're in the gun again. It would be a terrific story if he wins a premiership with the faith that the club has shown in him. And I still think he owes the footy club. I you're still, a hard I, man. I still do. Oh, he's, in the, he's in the gun. Who you got in the gun? Well, given the... The absence of Dan McStay, um, I think it all falls on my check to stand up for this football club inside the forward 50. Mm. One goal and one goal so far in the final series. He's taken one mark inside 50 in total through this final series. It, it is time to deliver. As a team, they're struggling to mark the ball inside 50. Last week, they took eight marks inside 50, and McStay was four of them. So in the absence of Dan McStay, you can't expect Frampton to come in and hit the scoreboard mm. with regularity. You can't expect Mason Cox to do it. Elliot's slightly out, out of form. You'd love to see him kick two or three, but it's about my check for me. He's going to have to be... Super competitive in the air, bringing the ball to ground and and sacrificing his body mm. for the cause. Now I don't know whether he can he can do that. I don't know whether he's uh, he's uh, able to apply himself in that fashion. But if they are to win, he's going to have to have 
I reckon, a dozen contests inside the forward 50 that are just absolute brute force. Yep. Love it. Um, so to go in my check in the gun for the Pies, who have you got in the gun? Let's know. For Brisbane, I'm going to go their wingers. The wingers. Kingy. Brisbane's wingers because they're playing against two experts, Dacos and Sidebottom. They are experts of patrolling and doing damage from the wing. They're, they win their one-on-one -on -one balls. They hold their width. They maximize their damage with their ball use. And I think that is probably an area of weakness. Now, with Ashcroft going out, McCluggage has gone inside more, so he won't be there. It's going to be a bit of Zorko. You would think it's going to be a bit of Fletcher, the youngster, trying to go up against the experience of Dacos and Sidebottom on those wings. Berry, perhaps, a little bit, but does he have the running power to go with those two? So let's watch the wing battle tomorrow. I think it's going to be really important, and if Brisbane have a weakness, it is those wingers up against Collingwood. Wingers. Yep. Who you got in the gun? Just the young Lions. The first time last week, Fletcher in that first final was it was the best red-headed performance we've seen since yeah. Dermot Brereton, oh, no. right? It's Kicking great. the three, and we, yeah. we, we had a bit of a laugh about it, and, and the, the kid was terrific. So he's only 19. He's only played 14-odd games of footy. So we're not we're not going hard at Fletcher. Wilmot's a young fella, still a teenager, hasn't played yet 30 games. Poor I just, last week. I just worried whether they – whether they looked, they looked so vulnerable last week. I'm just wondering whether they can find in a grand final. If you look at their bottom four players in terms of experience, it's Kitty Coleman, Devin Robertson, Darcy Wilmot, Jasper mm. Fletcher. They're the four that are that are just going to be closely watching to see if they can stand up in a big game. Yep. All right. This one coming through from Mel Boys. It's Jamie Elliott for me, out of form, but has the ability to kick three and turn it on. Um, strange. This one's from Brett that players can pop up in a grand final. I think Brisbane by 43 points and Connor McKenna for the Norm Smith medal says Brett, uh, Kingy, my check ain't Wayne Carey. Says Chris. <laughs> no, he ain't. You're not asking him to be. I, I'm not asking him to mark the ball. I'm just asking him to bring it to ground at, uh, worst. Getting a little clip here from uh, Pork Chop in Rosebud. He said What's that uh, if Dacos has 35 pies win, King, he says 60 seconds later, he says the only time they lost is when Dacos had 35 and kicked two. That's a pretty good game, 35 mm. and two. I think if Dacos kicks 35 and two, you're a long way to winning at the MCG. Pretty handy. And a few people give are, you that, are telling me that Dugowie wasn't standing all alone at stoppage. I'll tell you he was. Go back and look at that. And if it was Finn Callahan or bounces he had Ward and smashed Callum him. Ward, but... <sighs> They just gave him far too much. A couple of those defensive. Was he on close checking? Did you close check him this week? Um, no, but All I right. might send a text message to retrospective one of the GWS coaching staff and said, "Why was he standing all alone?" And they said, "Don't worry, it's going to give us sleepless nights for a while." Gee, they did so. They did so many things well. I, the I mean, they just that. Oh, I still think the biggest moment of that game was Callum Brown on the wing. Not not straight yes. rolling that ball with Markov. They were out forward of the ball. They had a they had a good lead. They had the game running as they as they liked in terms of momentum for the previous probably twenty minutes. And they just coughed up two easy goals. And the other one was the Ash turnover under no pressure. So both of those, that one, both went back for a goal. But they had I mean Collingwood had their opportunities as well. And they also had some poor physical efforts. I thought Hoskin Elliott had a really poor moment going going back with the flight of the ball. But, yep, Briggs wasn't strong enough in there a couple of times. Man. Your man. Oh, it's time for our predictions, Kingy. The winner and the margin. Oh, it's, you know what? It's just a guess. It is. It's just a guess. So I think the spirit and hunger of the pies versus the talent of the Lions. I've, I've probably fallen into the Lions late when I've been calling it all year. I'm going to disappoint myself, I know. But I'm just hoping it's a belter game and good luck to all. Collingwood by 17 for me. The Norm Smith. Harris Andrews. At a price. Andrews. I'm going to go Nick Dacos. I just think he, he wins it. Who's going to kick the most goals? Most goals. Uh, well, I think Charlie Cameron could get a mismatch and could get out the back all alone regularly, okay. given the way the Pies play yourself. I don't think it's going to be a high goal scoring individual, but I think Link McCarthy might get himself Link. three goals. Nice. Good form, Link. So this has been Fireball Friday on SEN. Thanks to our great partners, Melbourne Airport Parking. Nothing beats there. Parking, you can book online and for Brant, best on ground for your Brant John Deere dealer. Kingy, thanks for all of your work this year. It's been great fun, hasn't it? It's been awesome. Uh, that is it. If you've missed any of it, you can catch up on the podcast. I hope they have us back next year. Well, we we, we tested them late. <laughs>
They'll have us back. They'll have us back. Thanks to everyone, Sammy and Jordan and all of the crew, Nims and all the legends that make sure this show goes to where we appreciate all of your work. It's been outstanding. And thanks to all of you who have given us a chance this year and listened along and joined in. We will definitely be back next year. See you all.